Hi everyone, Thomas Hyman here, founder and CEO of Realty Partners, and uh, I wanted to take a few minutes to talk to you about uh, lead generation and lead follow-up, and um, just brutally, honestly ask the question, are you doing whatever it takes, or are you wasting your time and money? That's an important question to ask. Uh, when I used to uh, run my team, I, I used to show agents the Alec Baldwin uh, rant or monologue uh, from Glen Gary, Glen Ross. And the point he's driving home is that, um, you know, salespeople always complain that the leads are weak, but really it's the lead follow up and how the leads are worked that is the difference. And I see it in our business right now. I see it uh, with other top agents that I communicate with. You, you, you know, generally ha uh, have that 80-20 rule, but it's really more of a 95-5 rule when it comes to lead follow-up in a sense that 5% of agents are having outstanding lead follow-up and reaping amazing results, whereas the other 95% of the agents are not. And uh, so I want to share with you some best practices and uh, have you ask yourself and be honest with yourself are you really doing everything that you can? Because if you're not, uh, the uh, solution is not to generate more leads. You know, if people, uh, even if they're doing halfway uh, decent in their business, um, thinking that the key to them doing more business is just to buy more leads. So they're spending $500 a month right now with Zillow, and they're, you know, getting marginal results, and they figure, well, if I spend $1,000 or $1,500 a month with Zillow, that's the key when in reality, they could probably double or triple their results if they had a more effective lead follow-up in place. And it's not just true for real estate agent, it's true for anyone that is involved in any type of sales. Um, actually, what gave me the impetus for this was yesterday, I had a message pop up that Grant Cardone was doing a live video and I just listened in to it for uh, two, three minutes. He was interviewing a guy that uh, is um, working in the uh, multifamily real estate investment field. And he was talking to him about the lead generation and what it takes and um, what it takes to get started. And uh, he said, well, you know, at a minimum, if you invest $500 a month, you can probably get 20, 25 leads. And that will yield probably a $30,000, dollars return if you work them properly. So the average cost per lead there is about 20 to $25 per lead, which is what you also will be paying for high quality leads in real estate, um, anywhere between 10 and $25 um, per lead. And then of course, if you want to play at a very high game, you got to spend a lot more than $500 or $1,000. He suggested actually investing about $5,000 to $10,000 per month in marketing. And that's a different story, obviously, if you look at um, you know top performing agents and teams that do 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 deals a year, yes, they invest a significant amount of money in marketing, and uh, you're not going to get there with a $500 a month uh, marketing investment. So that's a different conversation. You know what are you expecting to get versus what you invest? But let's focus on what it really takes to follow up with leads effectively and. Um, and there are two key things to remember. The first one is speed of initial contact. And studies have shown that if you connect within the first five minutes, you literally will have a 20 times, a 20 fold uh, result than if you waited an hour to do your first contact. That's how dramatic it is. So you want to have your first contact take place within a minute or so. Uh, so you need to be keenly aware of how your leads are coming in. And if you get a notification pop up on your cell phone that a new lead came in, don't mute that and figure you go back to the later, you know, tap on the phone number and immediately that instance uh, call them back. So that's number one. And the second thing is consistent follow up. And that means you have to make a lot of phone calls. Even if you just have a small number of leads in your funnel, you really need to spend at least a couple of hours a day on the phone, calling those leads, having conversations. 
when a new lead comes in that you have to call them three, four, five times that first day, I wouldn't leave five uh, voicemail messages. I probably would leave a voicemail after the third call or something and send a text message. But you need to follow up consistently, repeatedly. Um, and email is not effective here. A lot of agents think, well, I'm going to send out an email and that's it. And I'll follow up again in a couple of days with another email. That is a total waste of time. When I get an email from someone that I don't know, that I didn't request, that I'm not interested in, I just not only put it into the delete folder, but I actually mark it as spam. So anything future from that person is automatically going to be pulled into the spam folder. And you don't want that to happen to your communications, obviously. So you got to make phone calls. And in this day and age, send text messages to connect with someone and get a response. And then once you have a response, you need to consistently follow up. And to me, that means a minimum of once a week, you have to connect with that person, okay? Whether it's a, a text message exchange where you send something and they respond back to you, or you actually have a telephone conversation with them, but you need to have a connection with them at least once a week, unless they are a very far out long-term lead. Let's say you have someone registering on your website right now, and uh, they're going to come down here into, we're in Sarasota, so they're going to come down here into this area, let's say, in January, several months away. I wouldn't call them every single week, but I would call them at least once a month. And I would have a conversation with them when I talk to them to learn more about them, what's important to them, what their interests are, what their hobbies are. And then I would put things in the mail to them to start building that relationship so when they do come down here, as it comes closer, I would then talk on a weekly basis with them at least. So very, very important. Uh, it's not brain surgery. It's not something that is very difficult, but people are not doing it because they hate being rejected, I guess. They don't want people to yell at them or hang up on them. Um, so sometimes it helps to play a trick on your mind. And um, what I would do is I would ask myself, how much is this person worth to me potentially, okay? So just look at your average transaction, and if your average transaction, let's say, is $200,000, and your average commission, your average GCI is uh, $6,000, and this person is worth $6,000 to you if they're a transaction, and let's say you have to make 100 phone calls to get a customer, okay? Let's say you have to make 100 calls uh, to get that deal, um, that would be $60 per call. So if you start looking at your calls that every call you make is worth 60 bucks to you, for every call you make, you're going to be paid 60 bucks. Then all of a sudden, sitting down and knocking out 50, 60, 70 phone calls uh, is not going to be a problem. And you really just have to put on your telemarketer hat and get dead serious about making calls one after the other. You make a call, you put a note into your CRM record, you make the next call, you put a note into the CRM record. If you have a lot of leads, get a dialer like Mojo, for example, that makes things a little bit easier, but you have to call, update, note the record. Did you leave a message? Did you get no answer? Did you talk to them? What did you talk about? And on to the next call. And if you do that, you'd be surprised how many calls you can make. I've had businesses where we had telemarketing operations and telemarketers would work on four hour shifts and the benchmark was 100 calls per hour. Obviously you don't talk to every person, you know, so if you make a hundred calls, you're going to maybe talk to 10 of them. Uh, but that was the benchmark for telemarketers. Now they had some tools that you may not have, but realistically, um, there's no reason why you cannot make between 30 and 50 phone calls per hour if you're totally focused on what you're doing. And if you make that part of your daily routine and realize that this is the most important part of your business, more important than listing appointments, more important than um, going out with buyers to look at properties because this is what drives your funnel, this is what feeds your pipeline, um, then you're gonna see major, major results. So again, number one, speed of uh, response to your new leads has to be within minutes. Number two, consistent, determined follow-up. And you just have to follow up until they either buy or die, until they either do a transaction or they tell you, you know what, Thomas, I like you. You're so determined and persistent.
unless somebody does that, um, you need to keep calling. And then number three, um, you need to put a value on your call and realize how much each call is worth to you. And that will make it so much easier for you to deal with that instead of the fear of rejection. You know, when, when you got to make 100 calls and you got to be rejected 95 times, that's a lot harder than making 100 calls knowing that each of those calls is worth 60 bucks. That you're basically being paid $60 every time you make a call, whether they say yes or no. Hope this helped. I'm Thomas Hyman, founder and CEO of Realty Partners. And um, if you like what you see, then please uh, like the page where you see it at or subscribe to the YouTube channel where you see it at. And uh, until next time, make it a wonderful and amazing day.